Today we're checking out my latest Astro purchase, it's the Miele PCGO2 Pro Mini PC. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. It's been a while since my last video, but the weather up here in my part of the UK has been absolutely abysmal this year, or to use a good Scottish word, it's been minging. Anyway, I'm living in hope of a better autumn season and so I'm in the process of dusting down my rigs and getting some new imaging trains together so I'll be ready to hit the ground running. While I'm still a keen user of the ASI air units from ZWO, some of my solar and planetary rigs are kitted out with cameras and gear from other manufacturers, so I also rely on a range of mini PCs to control my imaging sessions. Here's the latest one that I picked up from Miele, which is a popular brand in the world of astrophotography, and for good reason. In this video I'll go over some of the astro specific specs, the reasons behind picking it, how I use it with my rigs, and why it might suit your needs too. I'll drop links in the description below the video to this model and some of Miele's other popular options, as well as any other gear that I mentioned, so go and check that out if you're interested in picking something up for yourself. For those new to the world of mini PCs and their use in astrophotography, they're basically a cheap and efficient method of controlling your astro imaging rigs in a versatile range of configurations. You can find them being used in deep sky long exposure astrophotography, as well as short exposure lunar and planetary imaging, and even video and live stacking platforms in EAA or electronically assisted astronomy. Their compact size and relative budget pricing make them a good choice for streamlining your astro imaging sessions. If you've ever tried shopping for a mini PC, you'll know just how many models are out there. The range of specs and configurations can be confusing for those new to the hobby, but there's a few reasons why I chose this Melee over some of the other models. The first and most obvious is its size, or lack of size, it's tiny. Weighing in at just 180 grams, this unit will add negligible weight to an imaging train, which is important in maintaining balance and staying within mount capacity limits. In terms of dimensions, it comes in at around 14.5cm in length, 6cm in width, and a depth of just 2cm. Another feature of this model, as well as some other Melee models, is the lack of a fan. When imaging targets in deep space or within the solar system, it's vital to minimise any shaking or vibrations that can risk ruining exposure. Many mini PCs rely on a fan system to dissipate heat away from the internal components, but they can usually cause vibrations as well as noise. The fanless range of Melee's mini PCs mitigates this issue by using a combination of special plastic coverings and aluminium alloy thermal sheets, which are specifically designed to dissipate heat into the air to prevent overheating and protecting your internal components. This can cause the body of the Melee to become quite hot, but it really isn't an issue as the bulk of astro imaging is done at night in cooler temperatures anyway. When using it for solar imaging sessions though, I would take a bit more care in shading the Melee to avoid any heat that could be generated by the sun, but I'd be doing that with any mini PC anyway. The lack of noise will also avoid causing any disruption to neighbours in the wee hours. Another handy feature to astrophotographers is the wide range of ports that come as standard with this model. At the two far ends we have two HDMI 2.0 ports if you wanted to hook up a TV or a monitor, and a small reset button. The other side includes a 12 volt 2 amp DC in port for power, which is delivered by USB-C connection. You can power this mini PC with a variety of sources, but Melee states that the minimum power delivery should be 12 volts and 24 watts. You also have a headphone jack, a micro SD card slot, and a standard RJ45 gigabit ethernet port to provide wired connection to the internet. On the long ends of the mini PC, one side just has the power button, and the other contains the bulk of the ports that are most useful to astrophotographers. On this end, there's two USB 3.2 ports that support speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, and one USB-C that's also 10 gigabits per second. You also have the option to lock your mini PC by way of a Kensington lock slot. By far the most handy in my use case at least are the USB ports, which I'll use to connect my cameras and other gear. I'll go over the various ways I intend to use the Melee with some examples later in this video, so stick around for that. If you want to stay up to date with all my astrophotography adventures, then please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification below so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Thanks very much for your support, it really helps my channel to grow. Let's turn now to what's under the hood of this mini PC and see the internal specs and their benefits in regards to astrophotography. This Melee PCGO2 Pro is built around a newer generation of processor, which is the 12th generation Alder Lake N100, and it provides four cores and four threads of computing power with a 3.4 gigahertz clock speed. RAM's provided through an eight gigabyte single channel version running up to 4,266 megahertz, but it's hardwired into the board, so it isn't upgradable. In terms of storage, my version comes with 256 gigabytes of eMMC storage, so not SSD speeds, but I'll come back to this later in the video. You can also get this mini PC with 128 gig or 512 gig options, but like the RAM, it's not upgradable, so you need to be clear on which model's the best fit for your use case. The micro SD card slot's also capable of supporting up to a two terabyte card, and that gives you more options too. For connecting the mini PC remotely or for any other wireless options, you also have decent dual band Wi-Fi 5 running at 2.4 and 5 GHz, and you also have Bluetooth 5.1 as standard. 
For my imaging sessions, these specs are more than enough to easily remote control my rigs, as well as take both long and short exposures with my cameras. I've had no issues at all with slow speeds, latency or signal drops over Wi-Fi, and the systems remain stable throughout all my sessions so far, even when live stacking, which can be a bit more intensive in the system. So a big thumbs up for performance and reliability of this unit. There's also the option to use a range of operating systems with the Melee. My version was preloaded with Windows 11 Pro, but you can also install others like Linux. When running a unit like my ASI Air, I'm limited to its software only, as well as only ZWO products. But the beauty of a mini PC like this one is I can load mostly any operating system and programs that I want on it. This opens up the field to using a wide range of gear to add to your Astro arsenal. Don't get me wrong, I love my ASI Air to be sure, but it's also nice to have the option to expand beyond the world of ZWO at times. Finally, we come to a big treat, in the often expensive world of astrophotography at least, and that's its price. This wee thing's an absolute steal and I got mine for around £150 on Amazon. This unit and most of the other Melee Mini PCs regularly go on sale or have discount codes included in the UK and other regions, so you can go grab a bargain by checking out the links in the description below this video. For its price to performance ratio, as well as its adaptability, which we'll cover in the next section, this thing's hard to beat, in my opinion at least. So how have I been using my Melee Mini PC? Imaging here in the UK is a challenge sometimes, well, most times actually. So I have to have a range of systems ready to go to cover a range of astro imaging like deep sky, lunar, planetary, solar and EAA. I need to make sure that I can act quickly to the changing conditions, so it's great to have a consistent part of the rig that can be swapped in and out as needed. In relation to this mini PC, this efficiency is achieved through a mixture of its small size and software adaptability. On the software side, I have a large range of programs and drivers preloaded onto the system that can be used with a huge range of gear like cameras, autofocusers, filter wheels and many other accessories. So whether I'm photographing a deep sky target over many hours over multiple nights, or trying to get a quick peek at the sun and the moon, this mini PC is always ready to go. Yes, I know that's true for pretty much all mini PCs, but when you factor in the price, performance and its fanless design, this Melee unit provides a compelling package for astrophotographers. In most of my imaging scenarios, I can pretty much plop this wee thing onto my rig, connect what I need and off I go. But in some cases, I need additional hardware. One thing this mini PC lacks is a place for connecting and powering dew heaters and cooled cameras. This may or may not be a problem depending on where you live, but here in the UK, dew can certainly be a problem over the course of a longer imaging session. Dew heaters usually need a powered USB connection or a dedicated RCA port to work. In these cases, I usually use my mini PC in conjunction with my Pegasus Pocket Powerbox Advance. I'm not going to cover it in detail here as I'll be doing a separate review in an upcoming video, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Basically, the Powerbox Advance provides power and expanded ports to help run your astrophotography sessions in unison with a PC, or in my case, a mini PC. The Melee can be connected to the Powerbox Advance through a dedicated USB 3 Type-B cable, and you can also power it through one of the dedicated 12 volt output ports, which helps minimize cables. As well as dedicated 12 volt power ports, the power box has a couple of dew heater ports that aren't found in the Melee, so you can power your dew heaters in this way. This would also be the case where you're operating a cool dedicated astro camera. These need power delivery too to enable their fans to work, so if you're running one of these as part of your session, the Melee can't power the fans on them, so you need to factor that in and source a separate power supply. These scenarios are only related to using some select hardware that needs separate power supplies though. When using my rigs for lunar, solar, planetary and EAA sessions, or deep sky imaging without a cooled camera, this Melee Mini PC works great in its own, and it doesn't need any other hardware like the power box. I also find that the USB ports in the Melee are plenty for just hooking up a small planetary camera for a quick imaging session. The small size of this Mini PC gives me maximum flexibility when connecting to my range of imaging rigs. It's certainly light enough where you can easily attach some command strips to it, and stick it wherever you need to on your rig. This works great, but for a more secure connection, I typically connect my Melee to my Lozmandir Vixen plates directly using a range of excellent adapters from Buckeye Stargazer. You simply screw an adapter plate onto the mini PC itself, and then screw this to the corresponding adapter. I use the Vixen and Lozmandi ones, and there's even a handy adapter to attach to my Ioptron Tripeer. I'll link to Buckeye's website in the description below, so you can go find the adapters that work for your rigs. So I've been singing its praises so far, but are there any downsides to using this mini PC, especially in regards to astrophotography use? Well, yes there are, but they're only minor niggles, which can be overcome in a variety of ways. In terms of ports, as I already mentioned, the lack of powered USBs or other powered ports like 12 volt outputs, or even dew heater ports may be a problem in some use cases. To get over these humps, you'll probably need to invest in additional hardware like powered USB hubs, dedicated power supplies, or complete units like the Pegasus Powerbox. In cases where you don't need to power any of your gear though, this isn't a problem at all, and this mini PC can help your astro imaging sessions in many cases as a standalone unit. Another aspect which might put some folks off is the issue of not being able to upgrade the internal storage of the RAM. Again, this depends what you're using your mini PC for. 
On the RAM side of things, I haven't had any issues at all with the inbuilt single channel 8GB version. This obviously isn't a mini PC that you'd be running PixInsight and Photoshop on to process and edit your images. It's not what it's designed for. Also, the internal eMMC storage might be a stumbling block for some users. In my case, I usually like to store my images on a dedicated external SSD anyway, so I can get around this on the Melee. I connect my Samsung SSD direct to the USB port in the Melee and have my images saved there ready for download later. I keep the eMMC internal storage free to run Windows and my other software, and this has worked flawlessly for me. Despite the additional investment in a dedicated SSD, which have become much cheaper these days, it's something I can certainly live with. As I covered earlier, you have a bit more flexibility in choosing your preferred internal storage before you buy anyway, so it's not as much as a deal breaker as a RAM may be. Also, it's worth bearing in mind that other fanless models in the Melee line do have the option to upgrade your internal storage, so it's worth having a look at all the models to see what best fits your needs. Finally, the amount of heat that you can get, especially during solar imaging sessions, means you need to take a bit more care in where you place this mini PC in your rig. Shading it from the sun's powerful rays is really the best way to go, but this could be said for any mini PC that you use. I think it's just a bit more pertinent in this case due to the way the heat dissipation works. Better safe than sorry. So that's my wee look at this awesome mini PC from Melee. It's been a pleasure to use and I'd highly recommend you pick one of them up for your astrophotography rigs. The form factor, price, performance and flexibility are certainly hard to beat. If I'm able to get my hands on any other models from Melee, I'll certainly do a comparison video. So if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments section below. Also, please share what you use to control your Astro Rigs in the comments. I'd love to hear about everyone else's experiences. So thanks for tuning in and I hope you found this useful. Take care of yourselves, have a great day or night wherever you are in the world, and clear skies to you all.